So now we can look at some intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces uh, are going to be really important when we talk about a boiling point, melting point, changes of um, phases of matter. So intermolecular forces are the forces that hold two molecules together. So we're not talking about covalent bonds. Like we're not talking about this you know, HCl bond here. That's a covalent bond. That's an intramolecular force. So that's a force that's holding two atoms together within the same molecule. We're, instead, we're going to look at the intermolecular forces, the forces that hold these two molecules together. So right here, this, this dotted line, that's, that's representing a force that's holding those together. Uh, sometimes these are called van der Waals forces, so these are intermolecular um, attractions between molecules. These aren't nearly as strong as those covalent bonds, right? They're, they're pretty weak, but they add up to be pretty strong and they can affect some of the physical properties. So boiling points, melting points, vapor pressure, viscosity, those are all things we're going to talk about later on in this chapter. In general, the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the boiling points and melting points are going to be. So what that's really saying is that the stronger these forces are, the more of these intermolecular forces you have, the more energy you have to add to your system to like rip them apart. So to break those forces. So again, you're holding those together. If you increase the temperature, uh, then you can then these molecules will be able to move around and, and overcome the force that's holding them together. So the stronger the forces are, the more energy you need that, that makes it have a higher boiling point or melting point. So remember what boiling and melting are. Boiling, you're, you're going from a, a liquid to a gas, so you have to break all these intermolecular forces um, that are holding things in the liquid phase. You break those forces, and then they become a, a gas. For melting, you're going from a solid to a liquid. So three of the, the van der Waals forces or intermolecular forces we're going to look at are dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonding, and London forces. So London forces, those are forces that everybody has, whether you're polar or nonpolar, it doesn't matter. Everything is going to have um, some kind of London force, and we'll talk about those next. Dipole-dipole uh, interactions are found in polar molecules. Okay, so these are dipole-dipole um, interactions are found in polar molecules. London. Um, everybody has them. Whoa. <laughs> Everyone. Um, so nonpolar molecules, that's the only force that holds nonpolar molecules together are these London forces. But those forces are found in, in, in polar or nonpolar molecules. But for nonpolar, the only thing that's holding them together are London forces. And then hydrogen bonding are, those are a very particular type of polar, um, uh, sorry, of dipole-dipole interaction, and it's when you have a hydrogen that is directly attached to an oxygen, a nitrogen, um, or a fluorine. When you have that situation, then you can have hydrogen bonding. So we'll talk about each one of those in a little, a little more in depth. Uh, so first we'll talk about London dispersion forces. So again, everybody has London dispersion forces, both are, you know, present in all molecules, um, in both polar and nonpolar. Uh, but with it, but nonpolar molecules, this is the only one that they have. So if you have a nonpolar molecule, your only hope here is um, is uh, London forces holding them together. So these are sometimes called instantaneous dipole moments or instantaneous um, dipoles. So dipole-dipole interaction, right? That's that's between two polar molecules. That happens when you have like a separation of charge. So dipole is really when you have you know one side of your molecule is positive and one side is negative. You get this little magnet situation kind of thing, and then it's going to be attracted to like another molecule. Um, that is, you know, whoops, one side will be positive, one side will be negative. Negative will attract the positive. Um, so with these temporary dipole moments, what happens is just imagine you have like one atom and you have a whole bunch of electrons kind of moving around. So you got these electrons and they're moving around really crazy. And if you just said like freeze, if you took like a snapshot, you wouldn't necessarily find all the electrons to be like perfectly evenly distributed around the molecule, right? Sometimes some will get stuck on one side, so if you have a lot more electrons on this side than this side, this side will be partially negative, so you'd have like a, a negative, you know, like negative sign here, and then the other side where you're lacking those electrons, it would be more positive, and then you, you create like these little tiny little mini magnets, you can think about it like that, you got these pockets of charge all over this molecule. Um, which is going to basically turn it into a little magnet. It'll be uh, attracting um, another molecule that could do the same thing. You can induce a dipole moment, and the easier it is to like induce a, um, a, a distribution of, of electrons like this, that's called polarizability. So the more easily polarized molecules um, will be able to kind of shift their electrons around so you get these, these charges. 
um, on both sides of the molecules. Now they move, right? So they these are not these are not uh, permanent dipole moments. They are just temporary. So you take a snapshot, and there, there is this negative side. Now you let the molecules go again. Take another snapshot. Now maybe the, the negatives moved over here, and this side's positive. So we can move around. And the more electrons you have, the stronger this force gets. So this tends to increase with uh, molar mass because the more um, the more electrons you have, the more everything you have. So it's going to get a, a, a bigger molecule in them. So these, if you were to compare two molecules that both have London forces, whichever one was heavier, whichever one had a higher molar mass is going to have stronger London forces, which are intermolecular forces. So the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the um, greater the, the higher the boiling point is going to be. So London forces again, um, these are just these instantaneous dipole moments. Uh, and you can induce a dipole moment. London forces, nonpolar molecules, that's the only force that they have, but every molecule is going to have um, London dispersion forces. There's a bunch of factors that can affect the London forces, like shape, which is kind of weird. So if you look at these two molecules, this is C5H12, and this is also C5H12, but they have a different arrangement. So this one is just like five carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five. And this one has three carbons in a row, and then one on the top and one on the bottom. And then enough hydrogens to um, make sure that all the carbons have four bonds. Now, when you have an arrangement like this, so this one ends up being um, pretty cylindrical, and this one is more spherical once you start putting on all of the hydrogens. And so you see the carbons are black and then the hydrogens are white there. And so what happens is that if you had two molecules that were kind of like shaped like this, right, and they were packed pretty tightly, they have a, a pretty strong, um, pretty large amount of surface area that overlaps versus these guys, right, which only really interact in this like one little spot where they hit. So imagine you're at a barbecue and you have um, hot dogs and you have ping pong balls and you glue your hot dogs together and then you glue, glue the, the ping pong balls together, which ones do you think are going to be harder to rip apart? Which ones have a greater surface area overlapping? Or which ones are going to have more glue, you know, involved there? So obviously these hot dogs are, right? These cylindrical ones. So this shape, just by the very shape of them, you're going to be able to, they're going to interact more with each other, right? If you were to glue them together, you're going to have more glue to overcome. There's more interactions that you have to overcome in order to separate them. So this is kind of like, um, you know, a boiling point. So this is kind of like taking uh, liquid molecules and trying to separate them into gases. The more that they're interacting with each other, the more um, surface area overlap that they have, the higher, the stronger those forces are, and then the higher the boiling point is going to be. And that's exactly what we see. So again, these, this, this is C5H12. This is C5H12. Um, they have very different boiling points based on their shape really the, the only difference here is their shape the sky over here is cylindrical and then this guy is more spherical and so because the the two hot dogs over here can interact a lot more the boiling point is higher so the boiling point is 309 versus 282.7 so one more note about london dispersion forces um, and again how it relates to the boiling point if you were to look at uh, the, the noble gases, so you have neon, argon, krypton, xenon, as you increase in the molar mass, you're also increasing in the boiling point. So um, neon is the smallest, it has a 20, in, in the boiling point is a 27 Kelvin, and then as you go down that group, right, you're increasing in molar mass, now xenon has 166. So you can compare the same thing with the halogens. As you increase in molar mass, you're going to increase in um, the boiling point as well. So if you increase in um, the intermolecular forces, right? So that's when you increase the molar mass, you're increasing in the London forces. So these are all nonpolar molecules. So these are all gonna be, um, they only have London forces. So increasing in the intermolecular forces gives you an increase in the boiling point. So in the next section we'll move on, we'll look at dipole-dipole interactions and hydrogen bonds.